So Figma finally redesigned Figma. I was at the config a couple of weeks ago, hearing Dylan Field giving the update and presenting it to everyone, flew back home only to realize I don't have access to the new UI or the AI features. After a couple of weeks of waiting, I finally got access to the new UI. And today we're gonna cover the top eight differences between the new redesign and whether it's worth the wait or not. Here we are with the UI 3. Now this is the light mode. This is what the dark mode looks like. Of course, typically I would go ahead and actually make it darker in terms of my canvas color. And for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna switch back to light just to kind of showcase what's new in here. So the main difference that you'll notice is that the top bar is gone and the contents from it is either shifted to the left panel here or the right one or this bottom new toolbar that they have. Now, most of the stuff from the top, so your frames, your shapes, pen tool, text tool, comments, and so on, has been moved down here. Even plugins and resources are now accessible through this actions, which is supposed to be where the AI feature would go. But of course, Figma's delayed that feature for now, and all we get is this actions panel but we'll go over in a second. Now, one of the main points of this redesign Figma has pointed out is to simplify their own UI. And so one of the things that they highlighted even at config was the fact that you can minimize panels and even customize them by dragging uh, and resizing them. So if you're working with, you know, a larger display, you can always go ahead and expand your properties panel or go slim and even minimize them. So if I'm showcasing this project, which is my portfolio here, because of course I'm always updating it like any designer should. In this mode where everything's minimized, it's easier to show colleagues or friends and get their feedback without all of that UI being distracting. And of course you can go ahead and click back here to expand it back into view. The left side in terms of the layers panel and the assets pretty much stay the same with the exception that now you get access to some libraries over here. So if you want to directly work on a, let's say an iOS 18 app, you can directly add this library into your project. And with this being in your project, you can quickly get access to a lot of the components where you can simply drag them out into your project. This used to be a lot harder because you had to go to the actual iOS 18 library and once you got access to it, you had to search for those uh, components and then drag them into here. So they've made it easier to add other design systems into your project through this new assets panel. The name of your file is up here now instead of the middle at the top. And of course you can access the same settings from before. Now the right side is where you see most of the updates. So this panel still adapts based on what you choose but you get a couple more options up here. So these options, which again, typically used to be in the top bar over here, are now next to where you can choose what this option is. And so as an example, I have, I have this frame. If I wanna quickly switch it to a group instead of a frame, I can do that really quickly. I can go ahead and use the multi-edit by selecting matching layers, creating components, using objects as mass, and I have access to all my Boolean operations over here as well. Now everything in terms of positioning is here now. The alignment options have shifted down along with it. And instead of hide content, the little checkbox that we had, we can now clip content or show content through this drop down. They also introduced a new way to actually create an auto layout out of um, frames or objects that you already have. Now before, if I wanted to turn this into an auto layout, I would hit shift A. And as you can see, usually it would mess it up because there would be nested auto layouts that would be required, which currently the default auto layout option doesn't understand. And so it's gone ahead and put them in a wrap style auto layout, which is not what we want. So now if I go back, you have a new suggest auto layout option, which you can actually get to by hitting control shift A. And by doing that, Figma's gone ahead and kept the consistency of all the auto layouts, um, such as a nested one over here for this one, and this one being on its own. So it's much more smarter now to make auto layouts that way. And in terms of your auto layout settings, 
maybe move it slightly down here, your width and your options for your uh, contents, fill container and so on has been moved down here as well. Everything else is pretty much the same except for the grouping of a few things. So it might take a second for you to get used to it. Now keep in mind at any point, if the, this is a little bit confusing, you can go ahead and actually click on this zoom view options and turn on this properties label, which will help you understand what everything is. And with this new redesign, there's less focus on the constraints. The constraints have been moved up here now. And I think that's an effort for Figma to shift people into using auto layout more, which I think is more popular than applying constraints. So that makes sense why they've taken up more space with the auto layout and moved constraints up here. A few quick things that you have access to is to flip things horizontal, vertical, and rotate 90 degrees quickly. This is nice so that you don't have to type in 90 degrees, 180 degrees, minus 90 degrees all the time. So I like this little neat feature. And a lot of the, another cool feature that I like is that under effects, you now have nice little icons to distinguish between inner shadow, drop shadow, layer blur, and background blur. And although these icons are subtle, it's really useful because if you have two different shadows, maybe an inner shadow and a drop shadow, you can easily tell the difference now because I can't tell how many times I accidentally made the change to the wrong shadow and regretted it. When it comes to the absolute position button in auto layouts, you can go ahead and drag an item in here and you'll find this new ignore auto layout button allowing you to move your button wherever you want in your auto layout or whatever item. Now, if you don't want to do that, there's also another way to drag items into the auto layout without following the constraints in there. And that is through holding control and dragging the item in here. And now that auto layout or ignore auto layout is already turned on for this. Now onto this actions button, which I'm sure you're curious what it does. This is your new space for a lot of the things you might want to do, such as going to plugins and widgets, quickly grabbing some assets from here, finding and replacing items, and you get access to a bunch of settings and a quick search over here. Now, Figma is saying that soon Figma AI will be right here. So if you don't have access to the AI stuff just yet, I believe it's on the way. So just be patient. Now back to the original question, whether this update is worth the wait or not. I would say it's not because it's not that big of a difference. I don't think my productivity is going to go a lot higher because of this new redesign. A couple of these things that we covered are nice to have. I feel like Figma has pushed this update a little bit too early, especially with the AI features now delayed. So I'm hoping to get access to those AI features and really test those out as soon as possible. In the meantime, if you got access to UI3, I hope this has been helpful. If not, hang in there, come back to this video once you have access because you'll definitely get access within the next couple months, if not weeks. And if you already have access, feel free to drop in the comments below what's your favorite part of this redesign. With that, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.